Another form of um, microaggression that is very common is the over scrutinization of ethnic minority behavior. Um, I'll give you an example of this. So we used to go into schools a lot. I would bring, I would go in with my staff members. And so um, I would panic a lot um, about bringing in my DBS, you know, or not bringing in my DBS, because I knew that if I didn't bring it in, if I forgot it for any reason, um, you know, I would have to deal with being, you know, anyway, the, the red tape around that. And so once I came in with um, a, a white member of staff and she'd forgotten her DBS and they just waved her on, oh, it's fine. And I was like, what? Really? Is this normal for you? Yeah, that always happens. Like, it's never a problem, you know. And I couldn't believe it because every single time, you know, all the few times I had forgotten my DBS, you know, I was heavily questioned or as you know, I was um, followed around the school all day by a teacher. But for her, it was very normal not to have some, not to have a fuss made about the fact that she'd forgotten her DBS. And that's because there's a certain level of um, trust that is afforded to a fellow white person that is not also uh, carried over to ethnic minorities. Again, we have to remember that microaggressions communicate to a person that they are um, incapable of performing well, invisible, unwelcome, and not trustworthy. So it's a not trustworthy bit that when people are over scrutinizing behavior, you know, have you done your timesheet? You know, um, where have you, where did you study? Or how long have you been doing this? These are all forms of microaggressions that communicate to that person that you're, you're not worthy of being trusted, that actually, you know, do you really qualify? Um, and as, as I say, they're very uh, unconscious, but also can be conscious. So just be very mindful of that.